and welcome back to the mobile homestead we have another garden tour lined up today so without further ado let's just get into it so what we've got going on in the living room still um, basically down in there we've got all of these little basils little teeny tiny basil guys and what's fun is now that they're starting to get their true leaves they're starting to smell like basil all of the squash and zucchini sprouted since the last garden tour, and I've actually got them split up um, half out here and half under the light up front. So here is a zucchini, here's a winter squash, and then I've got summer squashes here as well, these little guys. Little squash, hi! A lot of other flowers that sprouted had a lot of flowers in the cup, so I've already gone through, kind of thinned them out, so I really only left like two per cup. And then checking out what's going on under here, I've got a couple of borage, uh, some different nasturtiums here, and then a brand new round of nine different cups of seeds sprouting in here. Alright, so going outside, which is really what the fun part is going to be today anyway, so here we go. Gotta wear your slippers, it's gotta be comfy in the garden. So really, still not much going on here. I've got to go through chop that off, trim up this tree here, um, a lot of weeding that needs to be done, and a lot of the flowers that are inside that I've planted are going to be coming out here and filling this up. Some bulbs. Some more bulbs. This rose bush is just kind of doing its own thing, and I'm not really sure what it is, but it's doing it. Bleeding hearts getting nice and tall. Really, this one's gonna steal the show. I'm not sure what that is coming up right there, but the actual calendula that I planted is right there. So a few more little sprouts. And even more sprouts. Alright, so this is the part that I'm really excited to show you guys is the actual garden itself, but also the new seating area that I just made today. I have a tendency to do some kind of big project when I'm really stressed out, and I had a really stressful day um, in my head, so my body decided it was time to get to work, and here's what we came up with. <laughs> Ta-da! Next to the herb planter there, I have these um, camping chairs and this table that I've had for a while. Um, the mulch I got for free. Actually, the city of Ipsy has a ton of mulch just available, so I just pulled up with what ended up being 16 five-gallon buckets just to fill this space, just to give you guys an idea of how much mulch you might need. Um, and then I had a bunch of just extra pieces of wood that I used to make a trim, and if I want to get something kind of nicer looking in the future, all I have to do is take that out. And I've already dug the area, so perfectly fine. What I'm excited to continue doing is around the back here building a little fairy garden. We're still at a phase where I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. And I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. And I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. I planted stuff, herbs wise, so we will just have to see. And these are starting to go to flower. And I feel like I'm supposed to just pull these off, but I don't actually know. I was debating just kind of leaving them and seeing what would happen, just see what kind of flowers it produces. Over here are our strawberries. These are the ones that re-sprouted from last year. And this little guy is looking really sad. Um, I actually just found him over here in the ground. Um, right here last year was a pot that I had my strawberries in, and so when it sent out runners and it touched the ground, right there is where it decided to lay one, and I found it when I was out here digging around the other day. So I just pulled it up, roots and all, stuck it in this little node. We will see what happens. These strawberries have some really gorgeous red flowers that I just absolutely love. Gonna have more coming in. And then over here, this one's just got, I mean, I'm pretty sure these are gonna start turning into strawberries right here. Yeah, just tons of flowers on that strawberry plant. Over here, kind of in this little area, and in between the garden and the AC there, I planted some seeds for some perennial flowers. No idea if they're going to come up, but we don't really walk over here, so I figured they'll just kind of get their chance. Spinach is doing alright. Um, still waiting to see if they're going to 
like having been transplanted. But these le leaflets definitely liked it. So here on the corner of the bed, so these red brick pavers that I had a bunch that I pulled out of the ground on this lot and then I took a bunch from a different lot that was vacant. This one I just found in the dirt right over there today when I was digging. Um, I dug around a little more and didn't find any more. I was kind of hoping I would just keep pulling out free landscaping materials, but um, one is good. One worked really great right here, so plus some mulch and then got my nasturtiums that I've had in the house potted up. Um, and I've eaten some of these leaves already. You can eat nasturtium leaves just like the flowers and they have kind of a horseradish kick to them. So I popped a couple of those in a salad today and it was really good. I really liked it. I went through and did a bit more thinning on the lettuce and spinach in this bed. Um, especially the spinach, um, from what I was reading, they really need to be like four to eight inches apart. So I went through and just gave them a little bit more space. And everything that I thinned, when I pull it out, I actually save it all. And um, I made a salad today with all the sprouts of all the different things that I thinned. So it was this red leaf lettuce and this spinach. And these radishes here got really nicely thinned out. They definitely, because they're root veggies, they need a lot of space in order to be able to fully develop that root without running into each other. And then kale as well. Kale needs about 12 inches uh, between each plant, but for now I'm going to leave it where it's at, which is about four to five inches between each plant, um, just to let those sprouts get a little bit bigger, and then I can do another round of thinning, eat more sprouts. That way I'm not wasting anything that's coming out of the garden, and I'm only going to let a few plants get to maturity, but I'm going to still eat everything else along the way. Also, carrots came up today. And then on the peas, I was really excited. I just noticed today. Was it this one? Yep. See this little, this little hair right here? It's a little pea tendril. And it's gonna be reaching, it's gonna be reaching for right here. And as soon as it grabs hold, I mean, it's game over. As soon as these guys grab a hold of something, they just take off. So, really excited to have some peas. I have a shepherd's hook here so that some of the stuff I'm growing inside that'll kind of bush out, maybe the other nasturtiums I planted. Um, I have some hanging baskets, so I'll put them in there and kind of hide that whole garbage area. In front of the shed is my rainbow, or, uh, rainbow Swiss chard. Rainbow Swiss chard came up with some in that bucket. We got some in here as well. Little tiny guys. So excited. Lilac bush is concerning me a little bit. It's got a lot of immature blossoms on it, but they have not opened yet. And as I was, you know, over the past couple days driving around or something, noticed a lot of people's lilac bushes have already bloomed. So I'm not sure if I've done something wrong. There's also a big possibility that the moles that we have issues with of them being in the ground, they kind of dig around back here too. So I don't know if maybe disturbing the root system is leading to it not flowering, but I'm a little bummed. I'm really hoping they open up because I was going to make some lilac jelly. So these were two in, uh, inside plants that I had. I actually got them last summer and then overwintered them inside and they've been looking pretty sad. This is actually a plant that I've had for a few years. This is going to be its third summer with me, I believe. Um, her name is Fernadette. Yes, I named my fern and she's looking really raggedy because this is the original pot from when I got it, like three, four years ago. Um, it's never been repotted and somehow she's still forgiven me and sent up new fronds. So it's gonna get a repot. It's just, I hardened them off over the past week and then put them out here. And then we've had several days of rain and I just wanted them to get kind of acclimated to being outside first before I shock them with getting repotted. This one will as well. Um, this purple plant, it's called, what'll be on tags a lot at the greenhouses is Wandering Jew. And I've been told that that has very kind of historically inappropriate connotations. So um, I've taken to calling it Wandering Dude. So I love my little Wandering Dude. Look at my garden. I'm so excited. Oh yeah. And then the very last thing potted today is um, these are direct sown out here. These are going to be beans. The beans are called a dragon's tongue bean and they're a gorgeous, like kind of greenish gray, like with 
speckled purple dots all over it. Um, and they're supposed to be super sweet. And with a lot of beans, make sure you read your packages of your seeds, because it'll tell you to soak them overnight in order to speed up germination. And so I did that, soaked them in uh, water from the Brita pitcher overnight, and then I've got six seeds planted in here, just kind of five around and one in the center like I did the peas. So we'll see how many of them end up sprouting. If all of them sprout, I am going to go down to only like two or three plants in this five gallon bucket because I don't want them competing too much. I want to see how prolific they can get. But this is a bush variety of beans, so it doesn't need to climb as much. I can just put a tomato cage on it and that'll give it enough space. Um, this is not one of the self-watering five gallon bucket setups that I've made. Just trying something different with this one. I just drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom and put it on some two by fours to prop it up and give it space to drain. So I don't know. We're just trying, trying everything out. <laughs> garden tour for the day. There is a lot of stuff that's going to be going out in the garden in the next 10 days or so. As more stuff gets hardened off, we get past Memorial Day. That is historically when I tend to start setting stuff out that isn't going to be cold hardy. Um, I'm always scared that there's going to be a last minute frost that comes through right around Memorial Day. Michigan loves to throw us a little monkey wrench. And there's a lot of rainy weather lined up coming in and I don't want to set a lot of stuff out for it to get rained on for 10 days straight. I always say water is good for your plants, but you can have too much of a good thing, so. But yeah, for now, that's where we're at, and um, you may have noticed that uh, hopefully the audio and video quality was a little better on this video. I just got a camcorder in the mail from Amazon. Only spent 21 bucks on it because I was a fool and signed up for their credit card, but they took $130 off, so. So yeah, I. I'm honestly really exhausted from putting in all this uh, work for the seating area today, and I didn't really want to do a walkthrough, but I got a new camera and I really wanted to show you guys, so <laughs> thank you for joining me. I'm now going to drink this wine and sit and look at my garden, so I will see you next week for our walkthrough. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Catch you next time. So that's our garden.